okay? If somebody wants to say, I think DNA is the result of an undiscovered law of physics and we're still looking for one, that is an honest answer, it's an honorable answer, and I can go with that. And it gives, a, of course, a study for a scientist. Yeah, it's, it is scientific. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. There must be some source of order or some organizational principle here. Let's find it. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Okay? Now, if you're going to pursue this, the only way I know of to pursue it is to find a naturally occurring code. Mm -hmm. So where are they? Where's the other codes? Mm -hmm. The problem with this is it goes nowhere until somebody has something they can study. Mm -hmm. Now if you want to say, you know, I don't like your God explanation, I don't like your intelligent design explanation, I'm going to stick with this one. Okay, fair play. But you have to admit, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I've been debating this online for a long time, and I find it surprising how many people won't admit they don't know. There's an affinity for a position that it's got to be. And we will figure it out. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's more, I, I'm saying, well, you have to say I don't know before you can go down this path. Right. Oh, okay, so they don't even, they don't even start that. They, they won't even, they, they, they're stuck at here. Okay. A lot, you know, it depends on the person, but a lot of people, they won't say, I don't know where the genetic code come from. They won't even take on the challenge. It's like there's this bias in the world where people want to say, well, we've got it all figured out. Well, no, we don't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think the origin of the genetic code is the number one mystery in biology. Okay, but you can't. You Have can't. there been much papers written on that? Is there much work on that? Well, th there's there's a whole field called origin of life research. Right. Um, and you know it's a, it's a legitimate field now. Any breakthroughs there? We no. Should... Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I think the origin of life field has been notoriously unsuccessful for the last fifty years. Um, I have a whole stack of Origin of Life books, and most of them give these kind of, these kind of uh, shell game, hand-waving, sidestepping of this issue. Mm -hmm. Most of them are about the chemicals. Like, wait a minute, what about the information? What about mm. the code itself? Mm. A lot of these books, they never even talk about the problem. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, they'll say something like, like, you know, somewhere in the deep, warm ocean vents, the, the spark of life began, and it all started from there. And it's like, okay, they just leaped across mm -hmm. a huge chasm mm -hmm. and tried to pretend that they only took one little step. Mm -hmm. And it's dishonest. Mm -hmm. Okay? You, you have to face up to this question in order to get anywhere. Okay? So that old field is kind of stalled right now, waiting for some sort of breakthrough. I think it's stalled. Yeah. It's, you know, and, 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 and I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people pretending to have better answers than they have. Mm -hmm. Okay, but bottom line is you have to produce an example of a naturally occurring code before you can formulate a hypothesis about where they come from. Well, it, 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 not just an example, I mean, it, in their definition, DNA is an example of a naturally occurring code. You have to produce an example of a process that, or some sequence that occurred that got you to that code right. naturally. And, and, right. and if we're going to do science, we're asking for a repeatable scientific right. process. Yeah. So give us a repeatable scientific process. Yeah. Right now, there is not one. Now, this, we, we go nowhere until we have something to investigate. The only other option is it was designed, okay, by somebody other than a human, well, by somebody that, other than an alien. An intellect of some sort, is that what you mean right. by that word? A conscious, yeah. a conscious, intentional designer. Mm -hmm. 
because all codes that we do know the origin of are conscious and intentional. They serve a purpose and they're created by purposeful beings. Mm -hmm. And the more purposeful a being is, the more ability they have to make codes. You know, dogs and birds have this very limited ability to create codes. Humans have this enormous capacity to create codes. It's like the smarter the being, the more prolific the code making is. Okay, so if we look at DNA and we see how incredibly sophisticated it is, which later in the session we'll talk about that, the, the only reasonable conclusion is it was designed by an intelligent being. And, the, and, and this is a different argument than the alien argument because we have to have a being that's not created. Okay, so in the scientific community, I mean, you've got five, you've got five alternatives here. Right. Right. The, the scientific community is probably not legitimately, most of them, legitimately right. pursuing one or two or thinking or considering one or two. Right. Three or four are dominant. Right. And they're getting mixed up. Right. And they're not necessarily drawing them out and pursuing them in, dis, in a distinct way. The, some of these uh, undiscovered laws of physics, they haven't really overcome right. Uh, right. and stated the problem. And I'll just add one more thing. In popular literature, this argument is still being put out. In serious scientific literature, this argument is not taken seriously. Okay. Matter of fact, the, in serious scientific literature, the random hypothesis has really been thrown out 30 years ago. It's just too... It's ridiculous. It's, just, it's the worst. If the you probabilities to, are too small. If you try to apply any, if you try to apply any statistical analysis to this question, you come up with the most ridiculous numbers anybody's ever seen. The improbabilities. The improbabilities. So, so let me give you an example. The smallest known microorganism is called nanoarchaeum. And it's this little tiny, tiny parasite cell. Okay, it can't even live on its own. It's a parasite. Okay, mm -hmm. but you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. it has five hundred thousand base pairs. Okay, humans have three billion. So nanoarchaeum has five hundred thousand. Okay, so that means there, you know, the DNA is you know five hundred thousand of these little letters. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what? How many combinations of those letters are possible? Well, the math for that is 4 to the power of 500,000. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know what 4 to the power of 500,000 <laughs> is? It's something like 10 to the power of 200,000. Now, have they theorized of, of a simpler form of life that doesn't exist, but in theory could exist? Well, there are theories of... You can find this in the literature too, and there's speculation that that maybe something a little smaller than nanoarchaeum might be able to survive. But I mean, ten to the two hundred thousand, like this is, you know, one over one with two hundred thousand zeros, two hundred thousand zeros. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, any any time you try to argue for the, the creation of information by randomness, you get the worst statistical probabilities you've ever seen anywhere. Nobody in any field of science deals with numbers this bad, mm -hmm. ever. It's, it's ridiculous. So, like I said, I mean, this has really been thrown out 30 okay. years ago. So in, so in the serious scientific circles, there's not a lot of work going on here. No, okay. no. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay. Okay? So an undiscovered law, that's where the scientists have to go. Yeah, you, you either have an undiscovered law. Now, yeah. now why, why, do, why do I argue for a designer? Well, because nobody even has a way to really test this idea. This is not testable. Okay? Now, I realize... This idea is not directly testable either, but let's go to the origins of science itself. 